good morning dear friends and it is a good thing for me to meet with you through this video and with a prayer that this message and meditation this morning will really bless you and give you the guidance that you need in the days to come be strong in the lord that is what god wants us to be because he is a good god today is my meditation begins like this worries and anxieties can be a killer which can cause the death of a person before his or her time it is reported by the director of the all india institute of medical sciences in delhi that stigma attached to covid 19 can cause more deaths now this fear results in cases turning up late at hospitals with heightened breathlessness and this could mean increased morbidity and mortality he said in most cases and 80% of patients need only supportive care while 20% need enhanced att attention and of these only 5% need ventilation ventilators what does this observation mean the disease can be cured if only people stop worrying instead of worrying and report at the first symptoms sign of symptoms but is there any cure for worry itself there is in the any cure worry not only rob one of a healthy living with happiness it causes number of sicknesses as well Jesus Christ gives us the only cure which is an effective cure for worries and anxieties. It is recorded in Matthew chapter 6 verses 31 to 33. I would like to read this passage for you. This says do not worry saying what shall we eat? or what shall we drink or what shall we wear for the pagans run after all these things and your heavenly father knows that you need them but seek first his kingdom and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you that this is the only cure that is effective to set a person free from worries and anxieties there is no wisdom in worry consider this no matter how much you worry your situation will not change no matter how much anxiety you get your circumstances will remain the same and worries and anxieties will not solve any problem so uh, i want you to think seriously about this and see the foolishness of worry In Matthew chapter 6 again the same chapter verse 25 Jesus said do not worry Now by saying this he does not mean that it is wrong for you to plan for your future uh, days and not make any provisions 
for the future physical needs. What he means is, it is wrong to worry and be anxious about the future, which shows a lack of faith in your heavenly Father's love and care for you. Peter in his epistle says, cast all your burdens on him because he cares for you. How many of you really know that your heavenly father is a caring God? He is a loving God. He is more than an earthly father. His love is greater than an earthly father. His care for you is more abundant than any earthly father can make. And so he is, and Jesus Christ is encouraging us to use the only effective uh, cure for your worries and um, anxieties. In verse 30, Jesus gives us a promise to all God's children in this age of troubles of all kinds, diseases and pestilences and uh, for which there is no cure. The doctors and experts and scientists are all still trying to discover or make something that will work to heal this sickness and which will cause uncertainties. We need not to worry, according to Jesus in this verse. If we seek to let God reign in our lives, we can be sure that God will assume full responsibility for those who wholly yielded to him. Philippians chapter 1 verse, uh, Philippians chapter 4 verse 6 and also verse 19. Verse 6 says, do not be anxious over anything, but in everything with prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, bring your request to God and then the peace of God which passes all understanding will guard your minds and your hearts in Christ Jesus. And the same chapter in Philippians chapter 4 verse 19 says, but my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches in glory. Now that verse therefore is a very important verse. Because who can calculate the riches of God? Who can really determine God is rich so much? Oh, my friends, he is, this riches, he is so rich, is beyond any calculation. The Bible says, God himself said, if I am hungry, I don't need to ask you for any food. Because thousand hills and the cattle thereof, thereof are all mine. And then in another passage he says, silver is mine, gold is mine, and that means all the diamonds and precious stones and jewels and they all belong to God. Everything in the universes belongs to him. And out of his abundance, he keeps giving us whatever we need in life. In Matthew chapter 6 verse 33 is the cure for anxiety and worry. There is no failure in this medicine if you apply it and practice it. It says, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things that you are worrying about, you are anxious about, will come to you. They will be added to you. 
Now the word seek means being continually absorbed in a search for something or making a strenuous and diligent effort to obtain something. Now Christ refers to two objects of our seeking. Number one, his kingdom. We must seek the rule and power of God demonstrated in our lives and in our assemblies, in our congregations, in our families. It is personally and collectively, it, this must be true. God's kingdom come and his must be manifested in healing the sick, to destroy the demonic, and save sinners. The number two is seek his righteousness. By the Holy Spirit, we must obey God's commandments, possess a right relationship with God, love and obedience and holy reverence with humility. That is what seeking righteousness means. Righteousness in a simple definition, it is a right relationship with God. Are you enjoying and establish a right relationship with God? If not, that is his message. He is a faithful, my friends, and his promises are all, all, all genuine, and he never forgets, and he is always faithful to fulfill each and every promise he has given in his word. Someone has said, for every day, there is a promise given by our God for us to live by. And it says, if you do what you are supposed to do, seeking the kingdom of God and his righteousness first, and then it's all these things will be added to you. You don't even have to worry about it. You don't even have to pray about it. The only burden of your prayer must be Lord God, let your kingdom come into my life, in my family, in my church. Let your kingdom in my city. Let your kingdom come in my nation. Let this be the greatest burden of your prayer. And when that is true, then you don't need to worry. Remember, God loves you and he cares for you. Therefore, casting all our burdens on him, let us simply enjoy our relationship with him. All you need to do is make sure that you enter into a right relationship, a very personal, intimate relationship God with God. He is your father. He loves you and he knows what you need and he will not let you down. Trust him as you follow him. May the Lord grant you grace and wisdom for this. I pray that you will be made rich in faith, rich in the grace of God and rich towards God by your commitment, by your love of God, and by your desire to please your heavenly Father in everything you do and everything you say. May the Lord grant you grace and the power of the Holy Spirit that you will live by the power and guidance of the Holy Spirit. This life, trusting and loving. God bless you. And I pray that you will have a wonderful day today. So God wants you to enjoy. So have a good day and a very enjoyable day. Amen.